Good afternoon, or good morning or evening, depending on where in the world you're watching this from. Um, I'm going to be talking now about MBNMA DOSE, which is an R package for incorporating DOSE response information into network meta-analysis using model-based network meta-analysis. That's what the MBNMA stands for. Uh, I'm going to start by talking a little bit about the problem of dealing with doses in standard network meta-analysis. Um, and then talking about MBNMA dose and the package and how it sort of solves some of those problems um, and what the strengths are of modeling using the MBNMA dose framework and what assumptions it's making. And then finally, I'll just briefly mention about some other features in the package and what we're hoping to do with it in the future. So a standard problem in network meta-analysis when you have multiple doses is, well, what do you do with them? Um, and there's, there's kind of really two options here. One is to lump them together, uh, and that's, as in the sort of uh, network plot on the left, to assume that different doses within an agent have some sort of similar or common effect. And that gives us sort of quite a dense, well-connected network. But the problem is that that's probably not really a valid assumption because we would expect different doses to have a different effect based on pharmacometrics, based on biology. Um, so this is likely to introduce inconsistency or heterogeneity into our model if we do this. The other approach is to split all of the doses apart. But if we do this, we end up with a very sparsely connected network. And we could even have treatments and doses that are disconnected from our network, and in which case we can't estimate relative effects for them. And so that assumes that treatments are totally independent, that there's no relationship between them. So what we'd really like is, is something in between. We'd like to be able to sort of functionally model this. That's what we can do with MBNMA dose. So our first steps when using the package are to sort of load the data into a network object. Um, and once we have that, we can look at our data more generally. We can plot network plots, um, either at the dose level or at the agent level. And to get an idea of perhaps whether there is a dose response relationship and what it might look like, we can also run a simple standard network meta-analysis and plot the results at each dose of each agent uh, on a graph to get an idea of what shape the dose response function might take. So here we can see for allagliptin that we have a sort of non-linear dose response probably, and there certainly is a dose response. We wouldn't want to ignore that and kind of group all those doses together, or we'd definitely be introducing heterogeneity. So we can then fit the model. And to do this, we apply some sort of function, some sort of dose response function. So we define our treatment as being a specific dose of a specific agent. And then we can set this dose response function to be equal to anything that fits the data well and that we think might be biologically and pharmacologically plausible. So here, uh, just as an example, this is an Emax function, which is used a lot in pharmacometrics, and it's got two parameters. So we'd estimate relative effects for each agent for each of those parameters. And there's a range of different um, modeling arguments and, and options we can do. We're modeling this in a Bayesian framework uh, using JAGs behind the scenes and we can specify priors, um, all that sort of good stuff. And once we run our model, as well as being able to plot forest plots and rankings and other kinds of sort of post-estimation options, uh, we can predict responses. Um, and this is really useful because this allows us to predict um, at doses perhaps which aren't in the original data set. Uh, and we could also compare our predicted responses from the dose response MBNMA, which are these curves with the credible intervals, to the results from the split NMA, which makes minimal assumptions. And that's these vertical solid lines. That's the credible interval for the, for the split NMA results. And what we can see here is that compared to the split NMA, the dose response relationship has slightly more precision. So we get a precision gain um, over standard NMA because we're gleaning some additional information from the dose response relationship. We're not just saying that we don't know anything about the relationship between doses. We're saying that there is some sort of functional uh, functional relationship. But of course, that is reliant on the assumption that the dose response relationship is correct. If it's not correct, we'll be introducing bias. But we can evaluate this by comparing it to the data, comparing the model fit, and also comparing it to the standard NMA. So this is a very testable assumption in this framework. And it's the only additional assumption we're making over standard NMA. What we've also found um, in recent work we've been doing is that this can be used to link disconnected networks. So for example, in these two, these are just two little example networks. If we were interested in comparing, for instance, 
these treatments in the networks indicated by the, the, the red dotted line, we wouldn't be able to in standard NMA because there's no pathway of head-to-head -head evidence between them. However, if we use MBNMA dose, what we're then modeling is the dose response curves, the dose response relationships for each of those agents. And from that, we can then estimate a relative effect between our treatments of interest. So this can be really, really advantageous um, in, in cases where you have disconnected network and you have sufficient dose response information to be able to estimate these. And because we're modeling on the relative effects as well, uh, we don't have problems of sort of having to adjust for, for um, prognostic variables. Other features that the package can do, it can do modeling using class effects. Uh, so you can assume perhaps that different classes of agents might have uh, similar efficacy for some of the parameters. We can do consist consistency checking, which is really, really important in network meta-analysis, either a global check for consistency or a local check. And both of these methods we've built in also account for the dose response relationship as there's some sort of extra things to think about when looking at consistency there. And we can also model agent specific dose response functions. So we can have a different dose response for different agents in our network if we want. What we're hoping to do in the future is to combine MBNMA dose with another package that we've developed and that's also available on CRAN called MBNMA time uh, to produce models that can account for both time course and dose response simultaneously. Um, because this would be really useful in sort of drug development, pharmacometric kind of uh, meta-analysis stage. Um, and in particular, we'd then also like to implement that in STAM because for the time course models, they can take a while to run due to the uh, correlation between time points that needs to be accounted for. So that's what we're hoping to do in the future. Um, and yeah, these are just a, a couple of references for the key methodological parts um, goings on within the package. Thanks very much.